Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness about technology, energy, globalism, and diversification. As part of the Think Tech series, today's show is center stage, uh, coming to you from Pioneer Plaza at the core of downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Will Kaheli, sitting in for Donna Blanchard, and I am the proud office manager of Kumukahua Theater. And joining me here today is noted local actor, Jim <laughs> Aina. Now, remember that we broadcast live on the internet every weekday, and all our shows are streamed on Ustream TV and Speaker.com. Uh, if you want the links to our live streams or our previous broadcasts, just go to thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to join us in our downtown studio gallery for any of our shows, just write to j at thinktechhawaii.com. Now, Jay Fidel is the president and CEO of ThinkTech, a venture he started 15 years ago, and he is the reason we are all here today. Well, today we have with us uh, David <coughs> Island actor Jim Aina. Jim, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Will. Yeah. So, um, I hear you are... Uh, in a show right now, or opening, right? Yes, opening we're opening tomorrow. tomorrow night. Yeah, exciting. <laughs> um, what show are you doing? We are doing the remount of Show You in, on Rice by Scott Izuka. Um, it actually opened as the first show of 2014 season at Kumukahua mm -hmm. last year. I believe it was August. And uh, to great success. Got the good fortune of being able to take it to Maui for two performances, and here we are at the remount. So, well, who, who do you play in that show? You I, in this show, uh, I play Walter Yamamoto, better known as Dad. And uh, he is, uh, what's interesting about it as well is that this character is the longest of any play that I've done, mm. that I've gotten to perform this one character. I think by the time we're done, it'll be like 30 eight thirty nine performances so wow. that in itself I hold him dear to my heart uh, he's dad um, my son our son is getting married soon to a girl from Kansas mm -hmm. uh, but dad has been through he's had a pretty up and down life as we all do right. um, but what's interesting about that is I think for the first time perhaps in what's going on with his son and future wife uh, dad is so, somewhat forced to reflect on his own life and his relationship with his wife and that parallel um, as a play is going on uh, is quite amusing it's a lot of fun a lot of humor mm -hmm. and uh, but really easygoing kind of guy uh, no baggage you know so he he is who he is right. and what you see is what you get yeah, he is a fun character. I, fun I character. Have, uh, watched your performances yeah. both at Kumu last year and on Maui. Yes. In fact, when we uh, did the uh, tour to the Mac, yeah. Right. Um, so I know uh, we have some different cast members in yes. uh, the remount than we right. did in the original. So how do you? Uh, what is the difference between the original and the cast now? Yeah. Um, you know, it's. I think it's always great, actually. Uh, you make such bonds when you first do a show. Mm -hmm. But then theater is about growth, and the craft is about growing. And so when you have new cast members come, coming in, they almost keep the show really fresh. Mm -hmm. And um, certainly with these three new actors coming into, the, into Show You on Rice, they've really joined the family of Show You on Rice. Yeah. And they bring their own ideas and perspectives on those characters. And at times I found myself, one of them is the actress playing my wife, mm. mom, and uh, played by Karen Hir Hiranaga. Right. Which is, by the way, it's such a joy. A veteran she, actress. Yes, a general, veteran right? actress, yes. uh, quite talented. And she'll be saying something that I've heard so many times doing it the first time, but she'll say it in such a fresh, different way. Well, that affects how I say another how you line, respond, right, how right, I respond. Right, right. And so it really keeps me on my toes. Right. And, just so glad that these three actors have been able to join the show. Right, and um, let's see, there's also Michelle Patel. Michelle Patel, who plays the lead role of um, Kathy, and she is the future wife, daughter-in-law. Your, your future daughter-in-law. Yeah, yeah, my future daughter-in-law. So she's doing really well. She comes from Portland, Oregon, and has had a wealth of experience there. And so, again, she and, you know she's all of, what, 22 years old? Right. So there's this energy just and this the right freshness. Age, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 
and uh, Joseph Agudo. He yes, Joe Agudo. Um, interesting with Joe that this is his first theater experience. Oh, his theatrical debut. Yes, it's uh. his theatrical debut, and, and being so, he reminded many of us, but he's taken us back uh, as when we first started in the theater. The so, new kid. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep. yeah. So it's been really great in that respect as well. And so we've all been trying to help Joe along the way, but um, he's holding his own. He does a great job. Great That's, job. Yep. Um, how does this uh, production compare to when you did it in Maui? I know Maui was a mm -hmm. little different. Right. Um, the seating was different. Uh, How's the, the people there, the audience there, are they uh, um, accepting? To Very Kumu? receptive, yeah. They And I guess Kumu Kahua has been going to Maui mm. for a number of years. Right. So there's almost a following for the Kumu shows mm. that come to Maui. But they just seem to love Show You One Right. There's something universal, right. universal about the messages. Right. And so I think no matter where you take this play, people will just flock to it. Um, so relatable, so grounded, so earthy. There's something very earthy about it. Yeah, there is. Um, I don't think I can really compare the two. They're just such different experiences. I will admit and be honest that I love it in the Kumu Kahua Theater, in just because of the intimacy of it. Right. Um, it's a three-quarter audience seating, and um, they are literally right where you're seated, right. you know, actor, audience member. Um, and so that in and of itself puts a new dynamic to the play, and, mm -hmm. and I love that about it. And so um, we really do feel like a family, and, and I think what it does for the audience is that you automatically feel like you're in the kitchen or in the classroom or on the bus. Uh, so it's always great. They're right there. Yep. Um, and I know uh, our director uh, throughout all of this <coughs> has been uh, Reiko Ho. Yes. So how's it been working with Reiko? Um, throughout mm -hmm. what, almost 11 months. Right. I mean, not all in at the same time, but yeah. uh, with the same cast and now with a different cast. And sure. how does that all come together? Well, I, you know, she's had a challenging job in that, well, like us, she's had to adjust to different personalities, mm -hmm. uh, different acting styles. Um, I always enjoy watching a director work almost on a one-to-one -one with an actor or in a, a very intimate scene and you have a lot of them in Show You One Rice. Um, but w I think what I really love about Reiko is that she came in and she had a vision of what she wanted to see and she was really able to carry that through the first time we did it on Maui and yet again with the remount. And, and that's not always easy. You think you have to tweak it. Having said that, she told us up front, I want the show uh, to do something different, this time being a remount. Oh. I wanted to move the bar up a, a notch. Mm -hmm. And so let's try this. Let's play with that. And that's always exciting for an actor. Yeah, you yeah. you, you want to do that. Yeah, you know? Especially when you get the permission to Absolutely. let's try something yes, else. And yes. If it works, it works. I, mean, yep. it doesn't, it doesn't, but, you know. I find that I've really clicked with uh, directors that have not only allowed but encouraged you to, sky's the limit, man. Push right. the envelope, yeah. bring things to the table. Yes. That's almost your job as an actor. I can, I'll guide you, right. but let me see what you got. You know, and, and that's always fun to do. That's mm -hmm. always fun, rather than feeling really restricted in what you're doing. So it's been great. Good, good. Um, now I know Scott Izuka, the playwright, yes. uh, has been really involved uh, in the beginning when you guys yes. did it last year. Um, has he been as involved in the remount? Or? Not in the remount. We have yet to see him. In fact, we open tomorrow, tomorrow, Thursday. <laughs> and uh, we suspect, you know, Scott came to almost every performance that we did when we uh -huh. first did it, flew up to Maui for both performances. Wow. So the cast is really looking forward to seeing him. Um, so, but he hasn't been involved this time around. But, um, and what's interesting about uh, Scott showing up at all those performances is you really got the sense, and the cast all talked about it too, that he wasn't showing up because it was about Scott. Mm -hmm. He truly was happy for the cast, and, and maybe more so for the audience. And I think he was watching more the audience than the mm -hmm. show. All and the reactions. All the reactions. And I thought, wow, how cool is that for a writer to be able to write all these words, tell this story, and then see how it comes across, mm -hmm. you know, night after. That's what, it wasn't about 
me and getting the praise or being out there and right. I'm Scotty Zook. Never, never. Uh, I never got the sense that I don't think the cast did as well. Mm. Yeah. I'm excited to see or to hear what he's going to think about uh, the new cast and how it changes the show from the last time. Absolutely. Um, I kind of um, heard uh, a little bit of, of the rehearsal. Yes. You know, and I always get the last scene with you <laughs> and uh, in the bond dance. Right. You know, and mom reminiscing. Yeah. And it just seems like um, another take on the same story and it's like yeah. oh this is going to be exciting yeah you know nothing to take away from the original performances right. uh but uh yeah it's just going to be uh, a little bit a little bit different a little tweak, absolutely and what thing. people may not know uh well is that show you on rice is actually a, a sequel of his first play mainland education, education right, right. where his son is on the mainland and, and the roles are the situations are reversed well, Jerome is not in this play, our son. Right. It's his fiance that's in it. And so we were kidding with Scott at one point and we said, okay, now what happens after this? And perhaps there'll be a, you know, uh, it'll be a trilogy of something. <laughs> we're it'll talking Kiki now. Two. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And there'll be the, the two parents. Right, the two parents <laughs> going yeah, at the it. The two yeah. sides. <laughs> How are you going to raise the kid? Right. Oh, very good. So um, now, I also know that you are in the next uh, season opener again yes. at Kumu yeah. um, Joker, right. which opens August 27th. Right. So tell us about that play and tell us about your, your character. Yeah, well, I have to start by saying, you know, it's really interesting. We'll be closing Show You on Rice on August 2nd mm -hmm. and opening Joker on August 27th. So within the same month, I'm, uh, I'm involved in a show that's closing and opening, and that's going to be s somewhat interesting. Um, there's a number of things that I'm really excited about first. Um, you know, I, I, I've never shared this with you, Will, but I'm going to take this opportunity <laughs> yourself. Well, um, okay. Little do you know that you've inspired me. Um, I have seen you in indie films, in feature films, in commercials, in plays, and have attended plays that mm -hmm. you've directed. So um, you've sort of, I mean, I don't think you consciously think of this, I did something for the arts, <laughs> but you have, and you've inspired me along the way that a local man finds that he's, sky's the limit, and if you want something, get out there and do it, oh. you know, and so as I watched that, as I followed your career, mm. um, and I have not done it as long as you have, but boy, when I got into it, you were one of those key people that I watched, and I just wanted you wow, to know that. thank you. And to have you, so I have to say, one of the exciting things about being involved with Joker is that you're directing it. I think you're the perfect director for it. Um, there's a talented cast, um, Aiko Chinen, Jason Kanda, and Randall Galeas, Galeas right. uh, who I just recently met. But um, I, I'm just excited. They're going to be a great cast. And I'm looking forward to meeting Yilong Liu, mm -hmm. who I understand right now is in New York City. And the play is going to be running in the Fringe uh, up in New York. Festival right. up in New York. Right, right. And so I'm hoping that he gets to come back. And oh, yeah. I'm sure you, uh, yeah. Uh, we're in constant communication. He's awesome. on Facebook and yeah. stuff. Oh, so we have a tweet by uh, Donna Blanchard. Oh. Um, as an actor, what would you like to see in Hawaii that you are not seeing? Hmm. More local actors. More local actors. More local talent. I know they're out there. And that's why I'm so excited about what Kumu Kahua does, is it gives that local actor, the local director, the local playwright a venue in which to put their talent out there. And so I'm just hoping that we'll get the word out more. I, I'm not sure in, in what ways we can do that, maybe visiting high schools, perhaps talking more at colleges. Mm -hmm. But Kumukuhu is so important that way because there's a specific local voice. Right. It's, that it, they have that niche. Absolutely. In the community. Absolutely. Right. So I'm just hoping that more of our young people, younger, older people, just local people, will take advantage of, of being able to do that. I'm so proud um, of what I've seen very as good. far. Yeah. Nice, nice. For sure. Okay. Um, well, we're going to be taking a little break right okay. now. So. Uh, Stay with us. We are center stage right here at ThinkTech Hawaii. Here's the deal. 
Um, I'm Jay Fidel. I'm the host of uh, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, which is the Energy Policy Forum's program on Wednesday. That's how we call Wednesday Energy Wednesday. We call it Energy Wednesday every Wednesday. <laughs> Are you surprised? Okay, and we and we try to we get guys like Jim Alberts here from Hawaiian Electric who can tell us what's really going on in energy. We want to be informed. It's so important. It's the most important initiative in our state. <laughs> Clean energy is major, okay? And that's why we cover it on this show. That's the deal. What do you think, Sharon? I think that's great. That's why we're here every Wednesday from 4 to 5, and we hope you all join us so we can hear people like Jim coming on our show and co-host Ray Starling from Hawaii Energy. Okay, Jim, you've been here today. You've seen this. You heard what she said. What do you think? I think it's a tremendous opportunity for people to come together and talk about the issues. Oftentimes there isn't a good forum to bring these key issues out into the public and this is a tremendous way to go about it. And the, the activity of this show is essential to keep talking about energy because as you said, it's such an essential part of our lives that we need to pay attention to it and we need to think about the future. Okay, Ray, your turn. Well, this is a special time in the history of Hawaii where we're making some pretty radical changes in the way we uh, use energy and generate energy. And this show is the one place you can count on coming to every Wednesday and hearing something about the latest issues that are on the table, being discussed, that will affect us all going forward. So. Uh, come join us, and if you have some ideas you want to share with us about energy, uh, give us a call and let us know. We'll we'll put you up here and uh, and let you talk for an hour. So uh, come see us. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Jim. It's great to be from Think Tank's point of view. It's great to have the show. We love the show. It's our it's our most important <laughs> show. So come around and listen to us four to five on Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Bye. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, we're back, Think Tech Hawaii Center Stage. I'm Will Kaheli, your host for today, sitting in for Donna Blanchard, and my guest is Mr. Jim Aina. So, Jim, we have uh, another tweet, and it says, "Why does or why do you think uh, intimacy in theater is better, and what's better about it?" Yeah, I th I think sometimes it depends on the story that you're telling. But for the most part, from what I've seen at Kumu, for instance, and the shows that I've been, I just think it, it, it makes the show and the story you're telling so much more engaging and compelling. You really are. For instance, show you on Rise. Not to give anything really away, but there's a, a part of the play where everybody's practically in a bus. Mm -hmm. And you get that sense. And the irony, of it, I think what makes it so interesting is that three props are used, two chairs, and a pole, and instantly, everyone's in a bus. Right, right. And and there's just that closeness about it, and uh, you're like listening in, but a part of um, the kitchen scene. You're right there in their dining room. Mm -hmm. You can't help it, you know. Right. So, sure. And I think the relationship between the actors, um, knowing that you're surrounded by the people listening to your story things become so much more real, right. at least for me. Yeah, it's yeah. like they're right behind a wall. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, in your apartment. And right. uh, whereas uh, in another theater, like we were using the example uh, during the break of yes. like Kennedy, right. uh, where you have that proscenium and the audiences are uh, feet away, yes. you know, yes. as opposed to inches. <laughs> right, right. And uh, your performance is, is bigger there. Yeah. Uh, whereas at Kumukahua, you know, it's more, yeah, it's, smaller. it's smaller. People are more drawn in, you know, Absolutely. and it's more a, a, a voyeur kind right. of um, experience exactly. for them, I think, or Absolutely. I hope, you know. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about Jim. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, now, when was your first exposure to uh, theater? I graduated from Kamehameha schools, but while there, I, I did a number of plays and knew that I had found something that um, was really for me, mm -hmm. that spoke deep within me. And I tried a whole bunch of other stuff, but for some reason, the theater um, and doing plays uh, just hit me. And so uh, I left high school. I went to Denver, Colorado for a year. Um, I was in liberal arts. And interesting thing, on my wing, because we all had to dorm, 
were, 90% were all theater majors. Mm. And so I would help them uh, learn lines. Uh, the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, then based in Pasadena, California, were going through different towns throughout the US auditioning, because you had to audition to get into the school. So they were passing through Denver, Colorado. And uh, there were a bunch of the students that came up to me and said, Jim, whenever you read lines across of us, you really, you really get into it. And so it allows us, come audition with us. Wow. And there were about, about 10 of us that went to audition for the school. Well, three of us got in, and I was one of them. And I had never done plays there at the school. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the academy for one year. Um, and you had to be invited back, which I was, but all my scholarships and grants had all, you know, were gone at that Completed. point. And yeah, and I couldn't put my parents and my family in the situation. Well, they just didn't have it. Right. So I didn't go, ba uh, go back. I entered the College of Education at the University of Hawaii. The plan was to be a teacher. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and one day found myself on Bishop Street downtown to have lunch with my brother and his wife and uh, Hawaiian Airlines. I was interviewing, we found out for this position called flight attendant. Uh -huh. And that was bizarre to me. I had never really thought about it. But we stood in line for an hour, and seven days later, here I was being a flight attendant there. Wow. And I've been there for a little over 30 years. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So you have a lot of seniority over there. Yeah, really good seniority, which allows me, interestingly enough, to manipulate schedules so that I can do, you can do your, these your shows. Passion. Yeah, my passion, what I really love to do. Awesome. But, um, I have to honor that career as well because it is that career that allows me to do, do this my career. passion. Yes, right, right. absolutely. Um, what <clears throat> shows do you think or what, uh, what pieces affected you most? What? Mm. Productions. You know, Will, I've been really fortunate that I got to do just a variety and array of plays by amazing playwrights and amazing roles. And so I think any actor would say each play holds a place in your heart for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but for instance, some of them that stand out in my mind is The Rabbit Hole. Um, done at HPU, um, and I was so excited. I read up on it. I, I wanted to audition. I went down on audition, thought I was so prepared, and I was offered the role. Well, the story is about this mom and dad with their seven-year-old son. The boy one morning goes to chase the dog outside the fence, and a high school student coming down the street hits the boy. Um. And so the boy is not in the play, but it's how this family moves forward. Well, I was so excited to get the role until the next morning. Then I went into anxiety mode mm. because I thought you're an idiot Jim why did you accept this I'm not married I have no children all of my nephews and nieces are knock on wood well in the life how do I possibly relate to this character well it just so happened I'm reading the paper and I see that there's this group for parents and siblings of children who have passed away so I give it a call and the lady says I'm sorry but it's a private group um, but uh, what I can do is tell the facilitator, and she gave me the name, that you called and leave your number with him. Well, when you know, I know the facilitator <laughs> personally. Oh, wow. So I gave him a call. He said, the best I can do, Jim, is to see if the group would be okay. Right, right. So they approved three sessions for me to go to. I went to one. And that's all I needed. Uh, grief is grief, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a child or, but um, there's some, there is something a little different about a child. Yeah. And uh, just listening to this mother, who interestingly enough, uh, her child was seven years old, and the feelings she was going through, I thought, I can do this, I, I think I got this. So that was a special one, and uh, I got to play C.S. Lewis um, in both Shadowlands as well as Freud's last session. So mm -hmm. those two plays, and, and C.S. Lewis has a, a special place in my heart. And certainly I think Show You oh. is going to have a place there just for the fact of the immense bond mm -hmm. that I've made with cast members, with the director, um, being able to go to Maui and just what a joy ride it's been for the past year for sure. And I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. Joker. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's almost uh, your 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 comeback home uh, to Kumu, I think. Absolutely, I keep telling people that it's like going full circle and getting to come back home to this show. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, it's very good to have you back. Um, another uh, a tweet we have is: as an actor, what would you like to see in Hawaii that you are not seeing? 
Hmm. Is that that earlier tweet? Yeah, I think that was that earlier tweet. Never mind. Yeah. We're gonna skip that one. Because, but thank you, yeah. thank you uh, for sending that in again. Um, now, uh, okay, so you're a flight attendant for Hawaiian Airlines. Right. Uh, so when did you join? Like 1990. The airlines. Yeah. 1984. 1984. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Started in 84. Wow. Wow. Sometimes when I say it, I'm mm. shocked. I, the time went by so fast. Yeah. But yeah. It always yeah. does when you're having fun. When you're having yeah. fun. I mean, never would I have thought that I would, this kid from Kalihi, right. you know, going to Big Island was like going to Disneyland. That right. was a big right. deal. Right. And here I am in Keflavik. Iceland. I never knew there was a place named Keflavik. Right. Um, we did charters to the Middle East, all over Asia and Europe. And but so I'm very grateful to Hawaiian Airlines. It's done a semi-culture on this Kalihi local boy. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you know, as 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 um, <clears throat> as a uh, as Jim Ina, you know, as a person, uh, you also uh, being a boy from Kalihi, you know, you are kind of. I don't want to say a role model, but you know, for other kids mm -hmm. in Kalihi or wherever, <coughs> um, uh, in some small town in Maui or a big island, you know, they say, hey, you know, mm -hmm. Mr. Aina mm -hmm. can do it, I can do it mm -hmm. too, you know, I mean, it's all up to you, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, you, you know, it's interesting, oyster. Will, that um, when you're in a play, I've been asked a question, how do you, how do you get into that character? How, mm -hmm. how do you bring that character to life? And for me, it's one word. Believe. Mm. Believe it. Just believe it. It's no different in your personal life. Believe it. Whatever limitations you're going to put on yourself, mm -hmm. guess what? Yeah. That's where you're going to end up. <laughs> at that wall. Right. At that wall. Because you've, you've convinced yourself already. Right. Believe. Believe that there's this other thing on the other side of the wall. Mm -hmm. And then something on the other side of that wall. Just believe it. And go for it. Um, like I was saying earlier, that's what I got from you, that you were limited to stuff. I can direct. I can act. I can be in small indie films. I can be in, hey, why not? Yeah. Believe it. it. It's why not. It, it, even like this morning uh, when um, Donna called me and said, hey, you know, you wanna, can you host the show? Right. And I said, you know, I can either say no and, or I could say yes and open myself up to another possibility. You know, so Perfect like, yeah, example. Well, why not? Let's Absolutely. try it. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, will she have a show next week? I don't know. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it might be my show. Right. But, uh, but, you know, yeah, so, and, and this is fun and this is cool and yeah. uh, talking story and yeah. just opening yourself up to something new. You, you know, I, I always think to myself, I am so grateful to the craft mm. of acting because, and every time I get the grand opportunity, I'm humbled by it because what I'm doing in doing a show is actually saying to the craft, thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, because the theater and the craft of acting has enhanced my life, oh, yeah. my personal <clears throat> life. I've grown through this craft. So if I get the opportunity to do a show, Jim, you better do it to the best of your abilities. Right. You better pound it out because it's saying thank you. Thank you for enhancing my life, man. Right. It's amazing. Yeah, and I, I often get really emotional about it. It's that deep. It's that Yeah, deep it me. is. It is. And uh, yeah. people say, why do you do it? You know, <laughs> it, I don't know, but I just love doing it. I just, yeah. uh, and you never stop learning. No. You know, no. I, you can be, um, you know, an, an old, 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 old actor, <laughs> and you're still going to learn. Still you're still going to You learn from everyone. You learn from right. everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, it parallels my own personal life in so many, in so many ways. You know, it, acting is, it, it's about that truth of the character and the truth in telling that story. And I often find that I can't be as truthful to that character without somehow finding a new kind of truth in myself. Right, right. That if I'm at a wall with this character, it just tells me it's a red flag for Jim to go inside a gym. Don't try to dig here, mm -hmm. dig here. But see, I, th I think a lot of people are afraid of that. Sometimes we're afraid to go within ourselves yeah. and look at truth about look, yeah. ourselves. Right. Look in those little dark places. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. The irony to that is the more that you look at your truth of self, you can't imagine where that moves you. 
you know, not only for this character, for this story, the play, it, just your life. Mm -hmm. You're able to do that. And I think that's the difference. You know, we often detract, lie, hide, suppress. Um, we don't want to look. We'd rather look at your truth. Right, we'll right. tell you what you should be more truthful. No, it's not about Will Kahele. Right. Jim, before doing this, do this. Go here. Right. Um, but it's been hand in hand, man, with this craft. I found truth in characters as I find truth in myself. And that's, but like you said, you know, people go, why do you keep doing it? And Will, for the life of me, I can't really put my finger on it, <laughs> my arms around it. It goes over my head, but I just know I have to keep doing right. it. Right. You know. Right. So it says, uh, our next tweet says, why do you do theater? It takes mm. so much time and it doesn't pay well. Really? <laughs> no. So why do you do it? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, again, I go right back to that. It's, I, I want my life to be about the pursuit of truth for me. I, I've gotten to that point anyway. I, that's the best way I can put it out. I'm looking for truth within myself. And it's the one venue. Um, and I don't know whether it's supposed to be doing this or not, but it's, that's what it does for me. And so since it aligns with what I'm trying to do with myself, um, it's a perfect venue. Cool. But it's not only taught me about myself. It's about will. It's about the people around me. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's these awkward situations that we're in, and I think about the theater. There's something I can reflect back to a story I was telling in the theater, uh, to a, a fellow actor. You know, it gets that specific sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's brought truth to my life, more, tr more clarity to my life. Mm -hmm. That's what I do know. Um, but like I said, it's, sometimes it's so hard to pinpoint per se. I just know I can't stop doing it. It's, it's, I have to. Yeah, it's, I think yeah. it's part of our our makeup now. Right, absolutely. Who we are. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a short break. Thanks. And, uh, and stay with us. We'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right, and what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week, we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Hi, welcome back to uh, Center Stage here at Think Tech, and my guest is Jim Lino. My name is Will Kaheli, sitting in for Donna Blanchard. So, uh, okay, Jim, now uh, you told us earlier that uh, you did uh, American Sign Language. Right. You were a signer before. When did you, when yeah. did you uh, learn? Um, it was in the mid-80s that um, my sister was working at the Ala Moana Shopping Center. I would pick her up, and one day, one evening, I was early. So I parked in the parking stall, and I looked across at the bus stop, and there was a group of deaf people signing away. And in my head, I thought to myself, isn't that interesting? All my life, I've depended on these things called ears. Mm -hmm. Well, theirs doesn't work. And so there's this other, it was my first look at sign language and communicating in any other way. I was so fascinated. Well, when you know fate, call it what you will, the very next week I'm in the newspaper, and there's a free adult education class at Kaimuki High School in what? American Sign Language. Before I could finish the article, boom, I was down at the school signing up for it. I walked into class not knowing one sign. Uh, the teacher was deaf. And as the course progressed, for some reason, she took me under her wing. And um, she said, come with me. She was writing or trying a little signing that I knew she taught me. But she wanted me to follow her to a deaf cooking class. Mm -hmm. So the teacher 
was hearing and knew nothing sign language, but she was teaching and there was an interpreter normally. She said, you're going to be the interpreter. I said, I've only been here for three months. So she said, no worries. I'll show you the signs for these vegetables and the ingredients and go at it. And so she sort of threw me out there. Well, um, one thing progressed to another. I stuck at it. Um, I kept taking, there was only sign language one, two, and three. I kept taking them over and over and over because that's all there was. Finally, there was a formal program established at Capio Learning Community College. And so I went there, joined a two-year program, finally got certified. And uh, interestingly enough, at the time that I got certified, Kumu Kahua Theater, mm. with the ADA law in effect, was doing one performance of every show that they did, at least for the two or three years that I was there, would have one of the performances signed. Mm -hmm. And there were two interpreters. Well, I was one of them. And that was my link to the theater. So somebody, I always say somebody was watching over me, you know? <laughs> and um, I always remember there was this one play, I can't remember the title of it, but I know Jason Scott Lee was in it. Stu Rice. Was it Stu Rice? Yeah. Okay, that sounds really familiar. And he was there doing this monologue, and I was signing to the deaf people. But it was such a compelling monologue, and the way, of course, that he was doing it, that as I signed, I looked over at him, and I just stopped signing, and I just kept watching. <laughs> well, the deaf people are going, excuse me, we'd like to know what he's saying. And, well, that was a flag for me that I think I may enjoy that, uh. what's happening on stage, more than perhaps this. And, and so that spurred me on to keep in touch with the theater. So I started seeing a lot more plays, reading more plays. And in 2003, I heard of a play being done at the Manoa Valley Theater called The Laramie Project. Mm. Um, and it's a story of Matthew Shepard, the right. boy who was beaten and left on the fence in Laramie, Wyoming. And I just wanted to be involved with the play. So I went up and was gonna get the paperwork to somehow help sell tickets or usher. Well, the woman outside said, you know, they're holding auditions inside. Gave me a script and said, go read something. I walked in, it was full of people. Mm -hmm. uh, there were eight rolls up. I did my little monologue. That night, the director called me and said, um, could you come to the callbacks tomorrow night? Well, I had a flight and I tried to get out of it and I couldn't. That was a miserable flight the next day to Los Angeles. I, <laughs> I was not a happy flight attendant. Um, <laughs> poor passengers, I tell you. Anyway, I got there that night, and, and a friend tried to you know, calm me down. And, um, but at the end of the night, I got a phone call, and it was Dwight Martin, who was a director at the time. He's also the artistic director at MVT. But he said, Jim, we just did the callbacks, and um, I've cast all seven roles. And I thought, I'm sure there was eight. I said, well, wasn't there eight roles? And he says, yes. I'm going to reserve one of those roles for you. Wow. And I was like, what? I've never met this man. He's never met me. Mm -hmm. So I got back to Honolulu, and in the parking lot, I called him, and I said, Dwight, I'm willing to come up and give a final reading. I just was so afraid that somewhere in that rehearsal process, he would go, okay, made a mistake. Mm -hmm. you know. But I hadn't done anything since Kumu Kuhu in the mid-'80s. He said, listen, next Monday starts the rehearsal. I'll see you there. And so that show, The Laramie Project, also has a special place in my heart because, and that man, because it's what pulled me back into the theater. And so since 2003, I've been doing a show, if not two, um, every year right. since then. Right. Yeah. I, was, uh, I think the last one I saw you in before uh, Show You on Rice was um, like Gary Glenn Ross. Ah, yes. That's Hag. Yeah, David uh, Mamet. David yeah. Mamet. Um, I've, uh, you know, and earlier, you know, you were very nice to say those uh, kind things mm, about true. me. But, you know, I had the same thing about you. You know, mm. just watching you on stage, I was like, oh, my God, this guy is awesome. You know, <laughs> how, um, how he can just move uh, through a scene and, and you just bring people in in your performances, you know, and you're right there. And then um, I know we shared that film together, but we weren't yes. in the same film. Right. But we exactly. were in that um, uh, production of 6B. Yes. And uh, to watch your performance in there, and I was Aww. just blown away. And I was saying, wow, if thank I ever you. get a chance to work with this guy, you know, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and now, you know, it's like, wow, we're friends. You know, it's, yep. like, it's funny how the universe Absolutely. works. Yeah. And um, especially with you uh, bringing you 
full circle, yeah. you know, in many phases of your life. Absolutely. Um, so like with American Sign Language, was that one of the things that got you into a uh, flight attendant? Like, do um, you... Actually, I was a flight attendant prior to that. Oh, okay, okay. But it has opened doors I never imagined. I, I just thought, okay, I'm at this certain point, and I was just enjoying learning sign language until someone said, Jim, you can get paid for that. You right. Know? I said, what? They go, yeah, you can be an interpreter. So I, then I went and took the test, got certified, and um, got to sign for uh, the president, uh, Clinton, and his wife, and Mrs. Gore. Got to meet uh, Marley Matlin through it. And wow. um, it, it just, there was a deaf husband and wife giving birth. And the doctor said, I don't do sign language, nor the nurses. I need an interpreter right here. And to be standing there and watching this and, and the, the faces of this deaf couple. So my point is, it, is that yet again, I get this other experience through this whole thing called American Sign Language, and I can bring it to the theater and vice versa. Right. I still interpret here and there. And um, so you're still proficient in? Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So they were all tied in. It's all tied in. You know, you were saying earlier about how things sort of falling into place and how they sort of line up and but I, I'm a believer of that that if you put your purest intentions out there it's really pure without any holds on it any attachments to it the universe assists you oh yeah in getting that intention to you yeah it's, it really it's, does. it's funny how you figure that out yeah, yeah exactly. it's so simple <laughs> it's, it's so, so simple. simple you know but I think when we're younger you know <clears throat> you don't realize that nah yes said, no, you just yeah. ask the universe absolutely and it'll come to you i mean i i'm sitting back i'm thinking okay i just got to do glenn gary glenn ross becky's new car the remount of show you on rice here i'm going into joker i, I you know my cup runneth over just mm. when you think it couldn't get possibly any better yeah. it overflows but all it does for me well is that it just humbles me I'm more humbled by it. I, right, I, it's just right. so Yeah, grateful. and you feel, yeah, yeah. lucky, grateful. <laughs> exactly. anyway, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, and it, it, hel it helps you to just be a more uh, centered person. Absolutely. And, uh, and yeah, you can just watch the universe roll by right. and be a part right. of it. Um, I have another tweet here. Uh, what is Jim's process once he gets a script? Mm. What are the steps he goes through to create a character? Right. You know, and, and one of the things I th think I find so fascinating is to find out how other actors, what their processes are, because it's different for every actor, as you well know. Um, when I get a script, all I like to start doing is reading it and reading it and reading it as an audience member. And I make some mental notes. Sometimes I jot it down. What am I enjoying about it? What am I not enjoying about it? How does it make me feel? What do I think it's about? Who are these people? And why them in this particular story? I wonder what the playwright was thinking mm. for him to talk and tell, want to tell this story. All those things. Yeah. You know, and I think they're one of the people that perhaps, I know I did, I'm, I, I'm guilty of it, that have not acknowledged playwrights. I mean, you got to think about that. That is their personal voice. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, their baby. That's their baby. Yeah. It came from somewhere. Right. And so I like to just read the play just for total enjoyment. I, I, kind of, I guess I like to work out in. And then I, I, I think every story, Will, is about basically when you take everything apart, relationships. Mm -hmm. It's all about relationships. So I start looking at these relationships of the people in that play. Again, why those people? Why in these particular situations? Mm -hmm. you know? And so I just start discovering. And before, sort of by a process of elimination, I get closer to perhaps who the character that I'm portraying is. I also have to say that sometimes I think we overwork, meaning that the playwright, especially really good playwrights, um, Yilong, I think, being one of them, certainly, leaves you a lot of cl clues right there in the text. Yeah, right there in the it's text. right there. And there's a lot of markers along the way. Go there, three, you know, 300 feet, take right. Yeah. <laughs> Go down about another hundred, take a left. Yeah, yeah, There's a, you know, exactly. And if we just follow, no, we want to create all this other stuff that yeah. perhaps really isn't there. Trust yeah, the playwright. Yeah, yeah, you just wrote breathe, it. Just breathe. Yeah, just breathe. <laughs> <laughs> just breathe. Absolutely. Oh, man. Well, I 
you know, thank you so much for, for being my here pleasure. with me on my inaugural flight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, hosting. <laughs> um, but, you know, we are out of time, and so we're going to have to wrap okay. it up. Uh, again, I'm Will Kahele of Kumu Kahua Theater. This is Center Stage, and we'd like to thank uh, Jim for being here, and thanks to all of you for being here. Thanks also to our studio engineers, Zuri Bender, our floor manager, Sachi Slona, and to Jay Fidel, who somehow puts it all together. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening to Center Stage. To check out our previous broadcast on YouTube, just go to thinktechaway.com, and please like us on Facebook. Until then, aloha. Aloha. Thank <laughs> you.